Hey guys, and welcome to WWE Interviews here on Stinger Wild, where we bring you all of the biggest names and all of the coolest interviews in the world of WWE and professional wrestling. So in today's interview, we've got some real funny road stories from Kevin Nash as he talks to wrestling legend Stone Cold Steve Austin about the time when him and Scott Hall were traveling to a Monday Nitro in Panama City in Club La Vila, you know when they used to have those outdoor nitros. And this particular one was from March 1998, the night after WCW Uncensored. If you can remember, Scott Hall and Kevin Nash had those Hawaiian shirts on that night, the board shorts. Well, they actually brought those on the way to the show, and that was not all they brought. They also brought, you guessed it, a ton of beer on their way to that Nitro. And Nash tells that very funny story now of just what happened on that road trip with him and Scott Hall. So, um, I pick up Scott in Pensacola. We're gonna find, and we're gonna we're gonna drive down. So I go ahead and get a drop top Sebring, you know. It's of course. Spring break, you know. <laughs> yeah, got to. So. And the Sebring and was already, a good convertible back in the day. Oh yeah. Go good ahead. Little, good little ride. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Nothing wrong with it. So we've already been we've already been told, you know, that we're on double secret probation for drinking. Me and Scott. Yeah. And Eric's gonna said, you know, he's gonna send Scott to rehab if he did not quit, you know, quit coming TV all, all drunk. And I'm not helping anything, but I, you know, I'm, you know, I am. I'm just a little bit. I'm harder to to, to knock down. I'm, you know, I might be hammered, but I can stand. I can right. stand straight longer. Yeah. <laughs> so we take off, and man, it's it's bumper to bumper traffic down that 98. You know, we you know, we got a ways to go. So Scott's the same man. Uh, Let's just pick up a six pack. So I said, All right, man. It's a beautiful day, man. Sun's down. We got our shirts off in the car. Oh, Jesus. So we walk in, we walk in there, and of course, Scott goes, looks at me, goes, six pack, right? I said, yeah. He says, 16 ounces. I said, yeah, I'm fine. You know, six pack, 16 ounces. We drive for a while, you know, we got to take a piss break, so take a piss break. And I go, I, I, I'm sitting in the car, and it, now, you know, we, it's so hot now. We got the top down, but we're running air conditioning. And, you know, he gets in the car. He's got a 12-pack in his hand. I'm like, Jesus. I said, you get it? He says, don't worry. He's got solo cups. So he's, he's bartending underneath the, the seat. We're drinking the solo cups. So now we get closer in, and, he, and, and we're starting to feel a little, you know, little, little buzz going. So we get another 12-pack. So when we get the 12-pack, we said, well, we, we got I mean, we're going in this thing. So we go ahead and pick up two uh Suitcases of uh, Bud Light, the twenty, the big, the, you know, the, the, the big cases. Yeah, I get you. And, and we go in and get matching board shorts, Hawaiian shirts, and flip flops. So we pull in, and it's like the show's ready to start in about forty-five minutes. And Bischoff's like sees us, and he's in this tent where they're having like a cookout. We get out of the car, I mean, beer cans are, and we're, we're, we're running in these flip-flops, and we know if we can get this beer in the Hogan's um, trailer, we're safe. It's like the safety zone. So right. we're trying to run these flip-flops. He's, hey, hey, hey. So we get in there, get the, get the, the cases open. I pop one, give it to Hogan. He pops a beer, gives it to Macho Man. Bischoff kicks that door open. We're all sitting there having beers. <laughs> it was like I just looked at. I just got appointed at, at Terry, and I just said, "I said, yeah, we're just sitting there having a beer. Everything all right?" He just shook his head and walked out of that. And later on that night, he, you know, he he was really pissed at me. And I t I've told this story before. I shoot interviews. He's walking, and we did that. Uh, that's when I said I was a cannonball uh, champion, and we dove off and. Did that thing with Big Show. And we're walking back, and Bischoff's behind me. He's like, I know you're drunk, you're drunk, you're drunk, you're drunk. And there was a girl up about 60 feet up on a scaffolding. And I said, what are you drinking? She said, tequila sunrise. I said, well, give me some. And she dropped that cup. And that cup dropped 60 feet. Bagwell was standing right behind me. And I caught that son of a bitch without an ice cube even stirring. And I just looked at him. I took a sip out of it, and I said, yeah, I'm drunk. And he just shook his head and walked by me. I turned around and looked at, looked at Bagwell. I said, Bond, James Bond. <laughs> I 
I was so drunk. So then that night we go and we get there and 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 he tells he pulls Scott aside, tells Scott that he's he's going to send him to rehab. So Scott says, "All right, all right, fine. I'm going to go to rehab." So we go to the little hotel and Scott's down at the bar and Sting's on the one side of the bar and Scott's on the other and it's like a, uh, a horseshoe. Right. And Scott is sending Sting shots of Jack Daniels and he's to, and he's told the lady to give him shots of. Uh, Diet Coke. Yeah. And he keeps sending them over, and Bischoff's watching it from the bar, and you can see Bischoff's just about ready to explode. Finally, he walks up, he goes, you send me. I told you I'm sending it. You know, and, I mean, Sting's going just shot for shot with a bang, bang, bang. And Scott goes, smell it, and it's diet, you know, Diet Coke. He says, why would you do that? He said, why wouldn't I? Look at him. He's drunk over there. <laughs> So some very funny stuff there from Kevin Nash. As I said, WCW used to hold their spring break nitros at Club La Vila. Outdoors at Panama Beach, they had the ring in the center of all these wee pools of water. Another one of WCW's very original setups that they had. And that year, Kevin Nash became the Cannonball Champion. When the outsiders were confronted by the giant and Kevin Nash had to escape, from the big man, the giant, so he jumped into the pool doing a big cannonball and the giant ended up catching up to Scott Hall, lifted him above his head and threw him into the pool, if you guys can remember that from back in the day. A very funny moment from the show, but what most people wouldn't have known or maybe they could have guessed that Kevin Nash and Scott Hall on that show, on that Nitro when they were doing their promo, they were absolutely hammered. They were off their heads. They had been drinking all the way to the show. So there's a bit of NWO inside knowledge there for you. But of course, it was a bit more of a serious matter for Scott Hall. Around this time, he would go off WCW television for a couple of months because he was forced to go to rehab. Bischoff forced him to go into rehab for his drinking. Kevin Nash, for him and the others, it was just a bit of fun. But for Scott Hall... It was a much more serious problem, which has been well documented over the years. So this Nitro at Club La Vila would have been around about the time that Scott Hall went MIA for a couple of months, but he made his big return with Kevin Nash at the May pay-per-view in 1998 that was slamboree when the Outsiders reformed was such an awesome moment, only to be totally undone at the end of the main event, which was the Outsiders taking on the Giant and Sting. Right at the end of that match, Scott Hall grabbed one of the Tag Team Championship belts and smacked Kevin Nash over the back of the head with it, and that was it. The Outsiders were done. Such a shocking moment in WCW history. Nobody could believe it, but that was the time when the NWO split off into two factions. You had the Wolfpack and the NWO Hollywood, and of course, Scott Hall joined NWO Hollywood at that time. And of course, just a few months later, at Halloween Havoc that year, in October of 1998, Hall and Nash had their big one-on-one -on -one singles match. And man, was that thing epic. A lot of emotional turmoil in that matchup. Check that one out if you haven't already. So there you go, guys. Kevin Nash and Scott Hall were a big part of the NWO, of course, and of WCW's huge success that they had during the mid to late 90s. You do have some, on the other hand, however, that say, well, those guys actually brought that company down. Well, I'm not so sure about that, but one thing I am sure of is that without Hall and Nash and the Outsiders and the NWO, WCW would have got nowhere near WWE in the ratings, and the company may well have fallen to bits a long time before it actually did. Hall and Nash, both in our WWE Hall of Famers, were always good for a laugh and would always entertain you in the squared circle. Whether it be on the mic with Scott Hall's classic survey or in the ring with Nash's big jackknife power bombs and Scott Hall's Outsider's Edge. So what are some of your favourite memories guys from Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, the Outsiders? Be sure to leave those in the comments below. And remember to like, subscribe if you haven't already, tell a friend about the channel and we will catch you next time here on Stinger Wild for more WWE interviews. Woo! 
thanks heaps guys for tuning into the video be sure to drop a scorpion death drop on that like button and subscribe to the channel for more awesome pro wrestling action from the wwe the wcw and much more